was a pretty snazzy intro, wasn't it? Welcome to my studio. I'm Daniel Edmondson with another tip of the week. Today what I want to talk about is your palette, okay? And a few other little studio things that I like to have in my studio. And also I want to talk about studios and why we have the palettes we do. First off, let's just talk about my palette here. This, well, before I do, let's backtrack. Let's talk about some of the other stuff I have here. This is a, a glass palette. I always recommend using a glass palette, not a paper palette, just because it cleans up in like two seconds with a razor blade. These are like a dollar. You can probably get them at a dollar store or a couple bucks at Home Depot or a hardware store. And um, the next thing I have is a pad of post-its. And I like those super sticky post-its because they'll stick to a, a dry oil painting. And a lot of times I'll have paintings scattered all over my studio and I'll go and make a note and stick them on my paintings. And the super sticky ones seem to be the only ones that actually stick to a dry oil painting. But what will happen is the reason I have the, the notepad here is as I'm painting, I'll be working on one thing and I'll spot another thing that I'll know needs work and I won't, um, I may not remember. So I'll just jot a note down and I'll have a note, you know, a thing of maybe five or six notes. And then when I come back to work on the painting in another area, I won't forget it. Also, a couple things I have here is a voice recorder. A lot of times I'll come up with a great idea about painting or an idea for painting, and I'm in the middle of painting, I'm in the throes of the painting process, and I don't want to stop that, but I also don't want to forget the idea. You ever do that? You come up with a brilliant idea, and then you remember it two years later? Yeah. So that's what that's for. Then this is just a notebook. A lot of times I like to write ideas about paintings down in a notebook or some sort of a, a moment or something that came to me and I want it written down not necessarily on a on a voice recorder and this is probably actually a throwback because this is what I only used in the past but then since then I got a voice recorder and um, it's kind of cool the voice recorder but no matter what the secret with the notes this is real important is the secret to whether you voice record it or put it in a journal is you got to go back and read it and that's um always was kind of an, a an area of stumbling block for me so what i ended up doing was making a voice file actually before that i made a, a cd or before that i made cassette tapes of all my good ideas and then i'd play them periodically and just listen to them and um, it really helped me to understand painting better because every time I, I had one of those aha moments I'd jot it down and then you forget these things so I'd have it play over and over and over on a CD or a um, cassette tape back in the old days for those of you who know what cassette tapes are okay let's talk about a palette this particular palette is this giant I must, I, it must be like a 24 by 30 or 20 by 30 it's big and um, you're only seeing a portion of it on the video here it actually extends out quite a bit further on both sides and the reason I want a big palette is I want to have a big mixing area right because paintings are about relationships and it's much easier to judge those relationships down here on your palette than it is up on your painting right so that's why I do that now, and I have another palette, believe it or not, this is for when I sit to paint. I have a standing, much larger easel, which I actually use a smaller palette for because that's what fits on my little table that I have. And I like to have the paint right in front of me, and I think that's kind of important, to have them right in front of you because a lot of people will want to put them to the side, to the right or to the left, depending on which handed they are. And all that twisting in your studio over the course of years could very well lead to a you know a repetitive use injury in your spine so I'm not a big fan of that okay now let's just talk about how I have my colors arranged and this individual colors aren't important as much as how you arrange them and this is important I think for a couple reasons one I strongly believe you should put all your colors out every time all right because a lot of people will say well I'm gonna do this painting but I don't see this color this color this color that color so they only put out three or four colors so their paintings end up kind of um, mushy because they don't have enough depth in their paintings and um, 
don't be cheap put out all your colors every time and I'm going to talk to you about that because I think that um, what you want to do is have your palette laid out all the time and you want to when I mean laid out all the time is you always want to have a place where you can go paint you don't want to say okay I think I'll paint today and spend 30 minutes setting up all your paints and getting everything all organized because that's going to be a humongous barrier to you coming back and working and starting painting because you're going to have to do this 30 minutes of putting out all this stuff just to get to the fun stuff which is the painting so what I'd like to see everybody do is have a studio completely laid out and ready to go at a moment's notice so because maybe you may only have 20 minutes to paint you know it, maybe you're a mother you've put the kids down you got 20 minutes while they're napping or you have um, you know 20 minutes before you got to make dinner or whatever you know if you're a man you got home from work it's 20 minutes before you take the family out for chicken dinner or something like that so you want to paint so you want to just go in your studio grab a brush and start painting and that is believe it or not a huge barrier to people not painting is setting all this up so you set it up and you're gonna say well it's all gonna dry out and I'll never get around to using it blah 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 well that may happen and if it does I'd rather see you waste the tube the paint in the tube I'd rather see you waste the paint knowing that you might come back and paint for 20 minutes here and there than have you never use it and never get around to painting and just kind of fritter away your art career okay so another thing is always put the same colors in the same spot it doesn't really matter how you do it I kinda go from light to dark you know yellows to reds but I also keep my cadmiums together because they're very opaque and they behave in a certain way and I keep you know so all these are pretty much opaque colors and these are pretty much transparent colors and they have different characteristics so it doesn't really matter though when you're painting because I'm when I'm painting I don't think opacity I have to go get this opaque paint I mean I might think opacity but I'm not concerned about whether it was here or there but what is important is to put them out the same place all the time so when you come back you just go back to that same spot okay now let's say that you are just not gonna do it you're not going to risk wasting the paint so I have another solution for you and that is to have a, another type of, of palette and I hope this will show up at least we'll see part of it this is what's called an easel pal and actually you can see that I've put glass in there although it doesn't seem to want to stay and this is also has another name French companion I, th I think they say it. it's called and you can see this is very well used I've used it for years and years and years for outdoor painting as well as for whenever I travel to do portraits or whatever I use it for it's my travel palette and you can get these this is a 12 by 16 you can also get 16 by 20s and they're real nice too and here's the secret to this if you want and you're afraid you're not gonna get back to your painting it's no big deal all you do is seal it back up put it back together and toss it in the freezer and the freezer will keep the paints from drying out and um, you'll be good to go now these are kind of expensive like around 80 bucks 60 80 bucks but they make one that's like 15 bucks 15 20 bucks and it looks like this and again you um, you buy it and you cut a have a piece of glass cut for it and then you put out your paints and um, use it well, this is a real good entry way to go because it's they're dirt cheap they're like fifteen dollars I think that might even be after you buy the glass and again when you're done using it you just throw it in the freezer and it's gonna not dry out and it's gonna be good for a long time and that way again if you get the urge to paint you just go grab it and start painting away now this thing is kinda cool these are um, it's like a hospital table in fact it is a hospital table it raises and lowers mine's kinda old so it's kinda beat up and you can get them on eBay for like sixty bucks so um and these are good for a couple things one I keep my palette on here when I work on my standing easel but also they're great for setting up still lifes because they're adjustable 
So they're really fantastic. Okay, so let's talk. So I'm trying. To, I'm talking a little bit about process, and I'm going to continue to talk about that for a few weeks because it's so important. Making your process easy and making it fun. So find yourself a space in your house. And if you can't find a, a, a room and, you know, it's nice to have real good light. But if even if you don't have good light, put up a bunch of fluorescent um, daylight balanced bulbs and just make it nice and bright in there so it's someplace you want to come work. And But get yourself a regular spot. Even if it's a nook somewhere where you can keep your paints out. A nook in a room. Or take your garage and convert it. I took, I took my garage and for $200 I was able to completely convert it. And I, now I have a space heater in there, a little electric space heater and, and air conditioning. And it's really a great workspace. And I've had expensive studios. And I always seem to come back to my garage studio, not because it's great, because it's actually kind of crappy, but because it's always available. So I can, can feel like I can tinker around with one thing, come paint for an hour, go tinker with something else, come back and paint for four hours, and so on and so forth. It's very easy and makes it easier to be into the process of painting, get into that. And you know, if you, you've got a garage, convert it to a studio. I know you wanna park your cars in there, but it's more important that you have a studio than your, than your cars. You know what I'm saying? Make Take your art serious. Really, it's important. It really is. It really is. And next time I'll talk a little bit more about process and other ways to deal with that. Okay? This is Dan out. Have a fantastic day. And paint happy.